Hello everyone. So today I have a really fun video because I'm going to be showing you how I made this little guy. So this is a gyroid from the Animal Crossing series. I made him a little trinket box so I can put all my junk in it and I wanted to show you how I made it. So gyroids are a furniture series thing in the Animal Crossing series. So my first Animal Crossing game was Wild World and in that game you would dig up gyroids the day after it would rain. They're like these little I don't really know how to describe them. They're like these little figurines and you'd put them in your house and they would dance and make noise. And honestly, I did not like them in Wild World because I'd be fossil hunting for my villagers because they'd ask me for something and then I'd dig up this thing instead of a fossil. I mean, in New Horizons, I wish I could dig these up, but it's beside the point. So I can't dig them up in New Horizons because they're not in New Horizons, so I made one. So in the English translations of the game, they're called gyroids based on the movements that they'd make because they would dance around in your house. But in the Japanese version of the game, they were called haniwa. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. Are based on these clay figurines that were buried with the dead hundreds of years ago, which actually explains why you'd find them by digging them up, but also makes them much more creepy. And now I'm a little bit afraid that I made one of these but that's beside the point. They're very cool. I think they're very fun. And that little piece of Japanese history is actually kind of cool. And I'm glad that I know that and that people are learning about it. That's kind of the story. And now I'll show you how I made him. So I started by opening up my air dry clay and then wrapping my form that I was going to use as his body in plastic wrap. So this ended up not really working because the air dry clay I used on a plastic bottle with plastic wrap in the middle got kind of messed up. You'll see later when I can't get it off. I'm rolling out my clay with a can of beans since I don't have a rolling pin. And then I wrapped that thin piece of clay around the water bottle I was using as a form. And then I smoothed it out with water, which is at that little bowl you'd see to the side. So I was just smoothing out all the cracks and lumps and bumps, which took a while. I really wanted it to look nice, even though you will see later that this doesn't work too well. But yeah, here I am just smoothing it out, continuing to smooth it out. Really take your time doing this if you recreate this because this smoothing out helps later. So then I was trying to cut off the clay. This is where the problem started. So I'm just showing off the body even though later this does not come off on the water bottle. So now I'm just going to start working on the arms of the gyroid. So I'm just rolling out some snakes, shaping them, measuring them up against the body, bending them. I accidentally bent one of them too much and so it got a little weird but it was too late to fix it once I realized the issue and I didn't have any clay left over, so I just had to live with the twisty arm. So here I am also smoothing these out like with the water. It's off screen a little bit, but just smoothing it, arranging them, and comparing it to the body. And then here they are finished with a little bit of my hair in the way. And then I started working on the lid, so I smoothed out the clay. And then I used this bowl as a form, and then I had to put a paper towel in between to make it not so flat. And then I would use string to cut off the edges. I'm just smoothing it out, trying to make it the right size. Not too big, not too small. So this just took some trial and error. And a lot of smoothing, again with the water. And then I made the little top notch piece. And then I started working on the rim of the lid. So I rolled out this really thin snake and then wrapped it around the edge and attached it with water. Just like I used water to attach the like knob thing on his head. So yeah, just smoothing that out, making sure it's going to stick and looks right and hiding the join. So yeah, that's where I'm just trying to smooth out the join so you can't see where the snake starts and ends. And I ended up with this piece, which I think turned out really well. So yeah, once I had all three of my pieces made, I laid them out on the counter so they could dry for a few days. So here I am the next day trying to get them off the plastic wrap. And this is where the water bottle form started acting up. See, I'm trying to get it off the bottle. And it's stuck. I stuck like a needle in there trying to get it to pop off and all it did was crack and not work. So here's more attempts. I was using a shoehorn. Here I'm using a business card. It would just not come off. So here's me showing off all these cracks that were forming and just not coming off. So I gave up and moved on to the other part. So I'm here I'm inspecting the lid, ugly plastic wrap in the inside, and then I'm just looking at the arms which I think turned out okay. So here I am just sanding them down, trying to remove some of the ugly bumps and lumps that were showing. I didn't even bother with the inside because it was so ugly and it's on the inside, so who cares? So this top lid is done. Again, who cares about the inside? No one's gonna see it. And here I am just sanding down the arms a little bit. This is where I realized the one was a little bit more bent than the other. 
but I just kind of made do and sanded them down and ended up with this. And then I just gessoed them to give myself a smooth base to paint on later. Please ignore the nasty blobs in my gesso. I bought this last year for a party and paint got inside the gesso and that's just kind of what happened. So yeah, I'm just painting the arms and the top of the lid, doing a couple coats for each side. So the arms, the lid, painted, you get the picture. Yeah, I just let them dry. And then a few days later, we finally got this body off of the water bottle with a huge crack in the back to get it off. So I had to do some surgery with some leftover clay. I had a little bit left, so I squished it in the cracks. So I also repaired the other cracks and was left with this ugly join. So I just sanded that down, the inside, the outside, really sanding it to try and smooth it out. And now you can't even see the join. So then I just gessoed that bit body piece. I got gesso all over my hands, but that's okay. Which apparently took a while, so I did the inside and the outside. Then I just test fit the lid finally, and it fit and looked great. So then I had to glue on the arms, and this super glue did not work. Um, I accidentally glued my fingers to the tacky glue bottle, and then I ended up just using the tacky glue. So this was my setup while it dried. A little janky, but it worked. And then I finally had my beautiful baby. It looked great, except for the bent arm. So then I just drew on his little face, his open mouth, and here he looks, all cute and adorable, ready to be painted. So I painted his body brown, with this light brown color that I had. And I did two coats of this paint, so I just carefully painted everywhere. Taking my time, apparently. I didn't end up painting the inside of the body, but I did paint the inside of the lid. I don't know why, it just kind of ended up that way. So then I did a second layer of paint after the first layer dried. And I tried to avoid the pencil marks on the face just so I knew where they were later. And this brown ended up being perfect. And it was a shiny finish, which I think ended up looking really nice and kind of like a glazed clay. So yeah, just painting and painting. I did end up getting paint all over my hands. And here I am painting another layer on the lid both the inside and the outside. And then I was able to paint the face. So I used a matte black paint for the face, which I think also looked really good. It made it look a little bit more like holes because I should have cut holes in the body, but I didn't, but whatever, I just painted them. And I think they turned out really cute. And since it was acrylic paint, if I made a mistake, it was really easy just to wipe it off. So that's what that other paintbrush is for. And then I painted his little chin area thing with like a mixture of that brown and black paint. And then I painted his freckle things, because if you look at pictures of Lloyd online, you see he has those little freckle things. So I just put those all over and would wipe them off if I didn't like them. I used a little paintbrush and the back end of another paintbrush to do this. So I put freckles all over him and his lid, would wipe off the ugly ones, put them back. And now we're done with our beautiful little gyroid friend. Hope you enjoyed watching my struggle it was a lot harder to build him than i thought it was going to be but i'm really happy with how he turned out oh no but yeah he's really cute i really like him he kind of looks like a teapot because his arm's a little too bent but we're just gonna have to live with that his lid keeps falling off so that's how i made my little gyroid friend here i hope you enjoyed watching if you did feel free to leave a comment or a like and tell me your favorite thing about animal crossing that's missing from new horizons anyways thank you for watching